talking about health this morning, and you know, we're talking about Angelina Jolie, and she was just recently in the news again regarding her health, and this time she removed her ovaries. So why is that so important, and exactly what does that mean for all of us who are concerned and are, are wondering about this? Well, Dr. Mike Janisak is joining us this morning. He's a gynecologic oncologist with Arizona Oncology, and you have some important information. And I, what I want to know is, why did she choose to do this? Well, let's backtrack a little bit about the Angelina Jolie story. She has a family history of ovarian and breast cancer, and she tested positive for a mutation, an inherited mutation in a gene called BRCA1. So her mother died of ovarian cancer, her grandmother died of ovarian cancer, and her great-grandmother died of ovarian cancer. Her mother also had breast, and her aunt died of breast cancer. So even without genetic testing, 10 years ago, they should have known that there was a problem in her family. So in a way, this really isn't news. Mm -hmm. uh, the BRCA gene's been known for about 20 years. So what's news, it's Angelina in mm -hmm. Hollywood. But what's important is she's getting the message out and the awareness out. She's the face of it. Example, we had a patient in the clinic the other day that we've been telling for years, you're at risk, you really should consider genetic counseling and testing years every time she comes in we tell her she comes in the other week and says hey did you hear about that angelina jolie story you think i should have that testing done and we're like uh yeah yeah <laughs> ding, 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 yeah ding, ding. so it, it, it's what what the healthcare professionals say sometimes goes in one ear not the other but when a hollywood star has something people pay more attention so we embrace that we uh, we uh commend her for coming out with her story and it's an important story so mm -hmm. just as a review she has a mutation that puts her at risk for breast and ovarian cancer she made some personal choices that she's written about. She had her breasts removed two years ago, uh, and now she decided to have the ovaries out. So I think what's important is she made a, a bold decision, but it's a decision that many women make every week in our, in our offices. Uh, she's just brought it to the forefront. Brought it to the forefront. And you, you, you say it's the BRCA1 mutation. What does that stand for? BRCA. Uh, BRCA. It's a misnomer for maybe breast cancer gene, okay. but it also puts you at high risk for ovarian cancer. So if you have a mutated BRCA1 gene like she does, she has an 87% chance of getting breast cancer. She has a 47% chance of getting ovarian cancer, which is far deadlier. Ovarian cancer is four times as deadly as breast cancer. Can it be detected or no? Well, that's the problem with ovarian cancer. It cannot be detected. Oh. So she decided to have the ovaries preventatively removed rather than attempting screening, which is not effective. Now, for breast cancer, you can do mammograms, MRIs. Ultrasounds and CO25s are not effective screening for ovarian cancer. So really, if you're at high risk for ovarian cancer, either through family history or genetic testing, it is recommended that at the age of 35 for the BRCA1 mutation to consider removing the ovaries or at least the fallopian tubes. Okay, but now what if I still was hoping to grow my family? I mean, Right. Well, you, for younger you, women, it's okay to have your children, and when you're done with children, then consider risk reduction surgery because the cancers uh, start happening at after age 40, typically. Okay. So let's let's set the stage here. We're sitting around the Thanksgiving dinner table, and all of a sudden, we're talking to this person and that person. And I know when we've had you on before, it's important for people to look at both sides of the family, not just, oh, well, my mother had it so that, no, look and see what you, with your father's side as well, because, I mean, you are part of both of them. Exactly. We, when we talk about BRCA mutations, we tend to talk about breasts and ovaries. But for example, for the BRCA2 mutation, if you're a male, you have a nine times higher risk of prostate cancer and a much more aggressive, deadlier form. So pancre pancreatic cancer is another one of the cancers. So we tend to just focus breasts and ovaries, but you're right, there is a broader picture for these mutations and it includes men, and uh, men can also pass it on to their sons and daughters. So we do need to, it's not a sex-linked gene, so we need to pay attention to both sides of the family. Um, one of the things that's changed since I've been on here before talking about how the importance of family history is, when we're doing more testing, we're actually finding out that about 50 to 60% of people that test positive don't have a family history. So now family why do you think that Well, is? because- um, Holy wait, cow. Because we're, maybe women have had their ovaries out, they don't get, the ovarian cancer, maybe there's not a lot of family history, maybe someone's ado uh, someone was adopted. So the point I'm making is genetic testing is becoming much less expensive. It used to cost over $5,000 for two genes. Now we're testing over 20 genes for $1,500. Still wow. expensive, but the price is coming down. And we're doing more and more testing. So if you're a woman that had breast cancer 
If you're Jewish, breast ovarian, you need to be tested. Any woman out there that's had ovarian, fallopian tube, or peritoneal cancer, if you've not had genetic testing, you need to call your doctor today and ask them, why haven't I been tested? Listen to Dr. Uh, Janice. The other important thing is it's not just about BRCA1 and 2. We, that's what we've been talking about for years. Two years ago when the Supreme Court struck down the patent for the one company that mm -hmm. was doing the BRCA testing, suddenly these companies offered 20 genes. And for ovarian cancer, if you just test for BRCA1 and 2, you're going to miss 25% of the inherited mutation. So for all those women out there and men that have had BRCA testing and said, oh, I'm negative, if you've had a strong family history, you might want to ask your doctor, can I have the upgraded test that includes other genes? It's like software. We don't run Windows 2 or 3, whatever. We're up to Windows 8 or 9. Right, we, right. We tend to upgrade. And so there's been tremendous upgrades in genetic testing in the past two years. So it's an evolving field. So we get patients that said, oh, yeah, I tested negative five years ago. Right. Well, maybe mm -hmm. you might need to be retested for the more upgraded test. Mm -hmm. So it's a complicated topic, and it's one that's difficult to stay on top of. OK, so you talked about that, I, that the price has gone down because it, it was expensive a couple of years ago, and now it has gone down. But then the million dollar question, I mean, is insurance finally stepping up and, and saying, we will cover this for you? Yes. They are. It is rare, if you meet the criteria and the guidelines, it is rare that insurance companies will refuse. Okay. And one of the good things to come out of Obamacare is that for women at risk, it mandates that testing is covered. So okay. just talk to your doctor. And what's important also is to see if you can find someone that understands genetics, a professional genetic counselor. If you're worried or concerned, ask your doctor. Ask to be referred to someone that understands because it is complicated. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying everybody should be tested. But if you've had a personal history of cancer, if there's cancer in your family, don't be afraid to ask because you might find something that's important. It could save your life or save a family member's life. Okay, we have one minute left, but I want to touch upon this too. When a woman goes in to get a mammogram, because it seems like that is your, your baseline, you know, when you are trying to get all this stuff figured out and, and um, for just health in general, are the people that are at these facilities who are offering the mammograms, are they suggesting genetic testing or do do we have to wait until we come across somebody such as yourself I mean is it here's your paperwork here's your insurance by the way if you have a family history you should get genetic many testing. breast centers are now including questionnaires and uh, different tools to assess risk so th the awareness is getting out there and I just think it needs to get there better I mean 20 years now this BRCA gene's been out there and we still get in our offices Every week or so, someone walks in the door with cancer, and you look and it's like, my goodness, we could have prevented this. Mm -hmm. Even Angelina jo Jolie's mother could still be alive back in 1997 when she got her cancer, had they been aware of her family history and done the testing before she got cancer. Oh the test gosh. was available in 1996. So Holy cow. Missed opportunities. Yeah, no kidding. Thank you so much. Terrific information. And thank you for educating our viewers. I really appreciate it. If you have any more questions or you'd like more information, you can always go to ArizonaOncology.com. We'll be right back with more of the Morning Scramble.